Hello, the internet. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> Hello, the internet. Um, it's Lara here, and um, this is going to be my first video that is is really in line with what I kind of wanted to do when I started this channel, which is featuring a plant or a specific number of plants that I have what I consider to be interesting stories about them. Um, I guess it remains to be seen whether or not you find them to be interesting stories, but the, I am going to start off with my aloe vera um, because this is the plant that really started my my journey into being a plant mom. Um, I ha had plants before um, and some of them are actually still alive and you'll hear about them before but this aloe vera is at the plant that really just got me into learning more about plants and all that kind of stuff so it is really the reason why I am here today. So. This is my aloe vera. It's gotten quite large. It is also babysitting some, some propagations that I have down here and has a couple pups coming in, but fairly large, pretty heavy. I actually picked it up today to bring it downstairs and it has a, uh, a root coming out the bottom. <laughs> um, and I know that succulents aren't supposed to have super deep roots, but um, I'll explain probably why that is a little bit later. But Anyway, so this is a plant that um, I just, I absolutely adore mostly because of how it feels. Um, I'm very tactile with my plants. I like the fuzzy ones. I like the ones that like feel a certain way. Um, so I love my, my aloe vera because of just how it feels. And I like the little spines that aren't really spines. Um, so uh, the story of how I came to own this particular aloe vera plant started back when I was in uh, middle school high school I guess in that I used to go to a comic book shop um, called Richmond Comics and the owners there had a big front window you know like most front storefronts have and they had huge pots I mean like huge pots of what I assume was aloe vera um, I didn't know much about plants then. I have a picture that I'm going to put over here um, of, of it. And this is the plant that I fell in love with. And the thing that I thought the coolest was, if you could see, there's a little flower right there. And I was like, oh, I didn't know succulents could flower. And, but they had, I mean, yeah. It's not a great quality picture, but you can, you can see the little flower. There. Um, and so I thought, I want to make an aloe vera be as big as they had, as big as they had. Um, and so I bought, bought them. You can, you know, you can get aloe veras basically anywhere. I probably got it at a grocery store. Um, and I proceeded to kill it. Uh, as I know a lot of people do with succulents, I oddly enough underwatered it first and then in trying to save it, uh, oh, then overwatered it. Um, and so then I killed it and I tried again. Um, and I tried a couple of times over the years, like as soon as I forget about my previous failure a little bit, I go buy another one and try again and basically kill it the same way. And after a while, I eventually was just like, okay, I give up on this. I cannot keep an aloe vera alive. Um, and so I didn't for a really long time. And then I had a friend who kind of got into succulents and she was going to do one of those living walls where you like put the the soil in with the wire and then you put all the succulents in it and then you hang it up on the wall and I, I just thought that was a really cool idea but part of that was um, she researched them a lot and one of the things she told me was she is like um, you know succulents are, are cactus type plants they don't like a lot of water which I knew you know I knew this she said but if they sit in water, then the roots will rot. And I looked at that and I was like, it had occurred to me before that they didn't like a lot of water, but it didn't occur to me somehow that sitting in the water would rot the roots. And then that was, that's what ultimately kills a succulent if you over, or any plant really, if you overwater them, they don't like to sit in water, they, the roots rot. And something about that really hit me like that 
I would have to care for different plants differently, kind of, like more than it had before. And so that was when I decided to give it another shot. So I went out and bought another aloe vera um, just from wherever. I don't remember where I got this particular one from. Um, and I brought it home and I started growing it. And now, you know, armed with that, I was like, you know, I'm not gonna water it until it's completely dry. Um, and if it's looking a little rough, I'm only gonna water it normal, um, you know, and then and let it come back. And so it started growing. And oddly enough, I did not kill it this time, which is great. And so it kept growing. And eventually I had to repot it. I think I had to repot it once or twice. Um, and I had it under a grow light down in my basement, which, um, part of another story, but I had, I learned about grow lights too, when it came to succulents, because they need a lot of light and my house does not have really great light. I mean, it has some light, you can see some over here, um, or whatever, but I don't really have any great windows for plants. And so I had to kind of learn about grow lights. Anyway, it was super happy under the grow light. It was growing. It was great. And then at a certain point, I think what happened is it got too big for the grow light because I had one of those just the metal domes that has the light bulb inside. And so I had it hanging up and blah, blah, blah. And so I had to raise it up a certain amount so that it could get to the all the sides of the succulent. And, and then the succulent started stretching because I guess because the light was farther away um, and it fell over. Um, like inside the pot, it fell over, not the pot fell over. Um, and at that point I was like, okay, so apparently this isn't good enough anymore for it. Like I, you know, this grow light just isn't doing it. And so I decided that I was gonna put it outside um, because I was like, well, succulents like sun and it's summertime right now. It was summertime at the time that I was putting it out. So, you know, I don't have to worry about being too cold. Um, and so I went ahead and put it outside and, um, not surprisingly, it got sunburned. Um, I had tried to put plants outside before and I always ended up with them sunburned. Um, part of that I think now is that I just didn't understand, again, different plants, like different, you know, amounts of light, different amounts of water, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I put it out there and I was like, okay, maybe it's like a person where it'll be sunburned for a little bit and then it'll get over it. You know, like we get sunburned and then it tans and then we're, we're protected. Nope, kept getting all the little leaves were getting, you know, brown and unhappy looking. Um, the plant, I, I thought, okay, well, let me try. And I moved it to a place where it gets a little bit of sun and then it's in the shade of a tree for a couple hours and then it gets a little bit of sun. And I was like, maybe that'll be better. It was not better. Um, and oddly enough, the other plants that I had out there with it were like loving this. So I was like, why is my succulent not being happy with this? Um, and it started getting squishy. Like I touch my plants all the time. I, I know a lot of people do, but I touch my plants all the time. So I know when, you know, it's not watered or it, it, when it starts getting soft because it's not watered enough. And it started getting squishy and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe it's just that I'm not watering it enough because I was basically leaving it and letting, you know, the, the afternoon thunderstorms we were having water it. Um, and so I watered it like really, really thoroughly. And then I was like, maybe that wasn't a good idea. So after a couple of days, it didn't help. Like the, it stayed soft. I was like, okay, maybe now I've overwatered it. So like I go out there in a panic with my husband and I'm like having him help me hold this large plant while I'm like trying to pull all the, the wet soil away from it. And you know, the roots were fine and I, I had not like killed the plant by overwatering it. Um, so I potted it in some new soil and eventually I just relented and I brought it back inside the house. I was like, I cannot figure out this sun thing. Um, and so I put it in, um, over on the kitchen counter, which is a place that I don't like to put plants a lot because my husband cooks and so he, he needs the counter for his cooking. But it was a place where I would be able to see it every day and thus be able to monitor it. And so once I got it back inside, it actually started doing okay again. Um, it took, it took a couple of weeks, but I started noticing some new growth coming in on it and uh, the sunburn didn't get any better, obviously. Um, but the plant itself was starting to get, you know, full up again and, and it was starting to grow and I was like, okay. Um, and it had some 
some pups at that point that were growing and seeming to be doing okay. So I was like, the plant is healthy enough that it's got pups, you know, so, um, but it was still like falling over because, yeah, I was unable to fix that when I was um, repotting. And so the next step was, um, on a whim, I decided to put it out on my other porch, which is, let's see, that one's east facing because that gets the morning sun and then west facing over here gets the afternoon sun, but it's a covered porch. And so the sun comes in and it only directly hits the porch like as it's setting. So maybe for two or three hours in the summer. Um, and I was like, okay, let's try that. So I put it out there and it actually did okay because I was expecting that sun to be way too intense for it because it's afternoon sun. Um, but it ended up doing fine. Um, it got a little bit brown for, I ended up cutting off, I'm not even sure. Yeah, I ended up cutting off some of them. Oh, I've got a couple of them. Only a couple of them that are still, um, that I had to trim off, but I trimmed off the brown just because it was ugly. Um, and it finally started growing really good. And so I was like, left it out there <laughs> and just left it alone for a month or two. Um, and then... Finally, I was like, the pups had gotten to a certain size and I wanted to try and repot it and pot it so that it was standing more upright. Um, and so I pulled it out of the pot that I had it in at the time and I put it into this, this one, which is much, much shallower, but more wide. And when I put it in there, um, cause it had fallen over and then the roots were coming down. So what I did when I planted it in here was I set the plant up and so the roots were going this way, which fit inside this pot because it's the wider one. And then I kind of planted it like that. And it's still a little bit off kilter, um, as you can see, but it has started growing now that it's getting the proper amount of light. It started growing a lot more compactly here as opposed to down here where you can see it's like stretched. Um, and so, okay, careful. Um, so I repotted it and it's been outside and it's been doing really good, um, which I'm really happy about because it's starting to get to the point now where they say the mature aloe plants, the, the immature ones have all these white spots on them. And then when they start getting more mature, those spots go away. And so I've got some of these new, the newest leaves that are in here um, are coming in almost entirely green. Like they've got a little bit of, of speckles on them, but they're almost entirely green. So I'm like, that's cool. This plant is actually getting to be mature. And um, I'm really happy about that because um, for a long time, I thought I would never be able to do this. But this is the plant where, that it really taught me, you know, you have to be aware that different plants need different things and know what that is. Um, and, you know, now I've finally got a rather large aloe plant and at a certain point it's going to need to be repotted again but I'm not going to worry about that at least until next year um even with all these I'm just going to let the pups grow and I'm probably going to let the all these little succulent cuttings just grow in there because it's not like they're going to hurt anything um and so that is the story of my aloe vera and how I got it to not die all right so um now you've heard the, the story about my aloe vera um, I hope you kind of enjoyed hearing a little bit about that, um, getting some, maybe some information um, about keeping aloe veras um, and about, you know, how to take care of plants in general. Um, like I said, I'm going to do this with some of my other plants, put, um, you know, some focus on them and their stories and the things that they taught me about taking care of plants. Um, and if you, if you like this story, there'll be more of them to come. Um, just go ahead and subscribe uh, to my channel, like this video if you like this video, then I'll know that I'm on the right track. Um, and I've also got an Instagram started, there's not a lot of pictures on there yet, but that's stories and succulents, because I couldn't put an ampersand, so it's stories and succulents. Um, and uh, there's actually some pictures of my variegated angel trumpet on there right now, which is... Looks like it's going to start blooming again, which is kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting that this late in the year, but I guess because it's inside now, it's warm enough that it's just continuing to grow. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so if you're interested in getting some more pictures, I'm going to be throwing up pictures of, of different plants and all that kind of stuff um, in the coming time. And um, I think that's
that's pretty much it. Um, so thank you so much for watching, and um, I will see you later. All right, bye.